So leaving crypto. This is something that I think a lot of people are about to do. Now, if we look at what is going on, just woken up this morning, I'm going for a little bit of a lovely walk here. I got my wired headphones in because I'm a little bit worried about radiation from uh, uh, AirPods. Let me know what you guys think about this. Also, these are just so much better. Like the mic on this is so much better than the mic on an AirPod. So I don't know, maybe I'm crazy, call me crazy. But with that said, I woke up, the portfolio is down, right? The portfolio is down, altcoins are down. Ethereum, I just got a notification saying that it was down 4.2%, Bitcoin is close to 25K. And this is it, this is the moment, guys. Obviously, people who are still in this market right now are still the strongest, right? Because a lot of people, most people have left. As we know, retail as a whole is not here anymore. We can see that by Google Trends, you guys can check that out. But retail is not here anymore and we are the ones that are left fighting the good fight. Now, the moment is coming where the market is turning again. I've been saying this on the channel, like I don't know how many times I've said it, I've repeated myself so many times, that I saw no difference between the recent pump in Bitcoin and the one, uh, and crypto as well, and the one that we had in 2019, right? In 2019, there was a move of around 250 to 300%, depending on where you start it, for Bitcoin. There was also something known as DeFi Summer, if you guys weren't around for that. I think that, that was very similar to what we had here. We had altcoins, not altcoins, sorry, we had meme coins. Sorry about that, big old truck in the street. But we had meme coins, we had a whole meme season, and we had AI, and we had a few different things that sent the market crazy. We made a lot of money here on the channel in that meme coin season, and that's what I was likening to DeFi summer, right? Completely different, but similar, right? It's not history repeating, it's history rhyming. Now, we're having a turnaround, right? We're having the market go back down again, and this is exactly what happened in 2019 in the, bull, in the bear market. We had Bitcoin and crypto go up, we then had a massive crash, and then what happened next, right? A monumental run. With that said, what I'm seeing in this market, my just my gut, I have no idea if this is gonna happen, and I'm positioning myself for both uh, the events to happen, right? If we pump, if we dump. We'll discuss that in a second and later in this video. But if you were looking at this market from an outside perspective, and you were thinking, right, what is the most likely and most obvious thing that could happen now if you wanted to get Bitcoin at the best possible prices, right? If you were an institutional investor, if you were a manipulator, if you were someone who has, uh, 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 who wants Bitcoin to go down, what would you do in a moment like this? You'd want the market to go at least below the old uh, supports, right, that we have. So we have supports all the way down to 15K. Now I'm hoping that we don't drop lower than 15K, but my gut is telling me that we're gonna get something that happens in this market that pushes Bitcoin's price below 15K, even if it is just brief. Now I'm not telling you I think this is definitely gonna happen, but I'm telling you that I think that it's likely that something like this happens. The reason why I think that is simply because the amount of stop losses and the amount of people that will panic if Bitcoin's price goes that low will be insane, right? People who, people who are right now feeling like, damn, I shouldn't have bought. People who are buying when the market got euphoric again are thinking, damn, I shouldn't have bought, but I can hold on now because Bitcoin's still 25K. I think those people will be stopped out if it goes lower. Now, remember, these stop losses can be hit from quick wicks. You see these God candles that we see when Bitcoin just pumps out of nowhere. We can have exactly the same thing happen on the way down and something in my gut tells me that that's what's gonna happen, right? I think it's gonna be short-lived. I think it's gonna be very similar to what happened in uh, 2020 when, or it was 2021, uh, whatever. The last downward bit for Bitcoin before we pumped. I was there, I had bought Bitcoin, it was the first time I had bought a significant amount of Bitcoin again, and about three or four days later, we had a 50% drop in Bitcoin. I bought again on that day. The day that that happened, I bought again. I spoke to my friend and I bought, and that was the very best trade I've ever done. And that's what I have been doing ever since. Every time Bitcoin has a mass panic, a black swan event, something like that, I am buying more Bitcoin, right? And then when the euphoria comes, like we saw in the bull market, I am selling 
whatever position, it doesn't matter. I sold Bitcoin, I sold Solana at 180, I sold a bunch of different stuff, I sold all of my Cardano in the bull run. But that's the plan. And it's just something that I wanted to share with you guys. And the reason why the title is Leaving Crypto is because in those moments before Bitcoin dropped when I bought it, it dropped 50%. I could have just left. And I think something similar is going to happen again. And I don't want any of you guys who have held it this long, who have been dollar cost averaging, or even just researching, staying attention to the market, paying attention to the market. We've got so far here and there will be people that fall at this next hurdle. And of course, if financially it's something that you need to do, it's something that you need to do. It's a decision that you need to make for yourself. It's not something I can make for you, but there are gonna be people that leave and I don't want anyone who's watching this channel to be the person that leaves just before we see a monumental run. Now, I don't know when that run's gonna happen, but I believe that we are gonna have another big shakeout in this market. And I think there's gonna be a Black Swan event. I think something's gonna, uh, something's gonna be released to the market. Something's gonna happen that pushes this market down. Again, it might not happen, but I want you guys to be prepared for that. Now, like I said at the start, I have two ways I'm preparing for this. Number one, I am simply not putting all of my money into the market, but I am dollar cost averaging slowly into the things that I believe in. That way I am protected both sides of the coin, right? I've put enough in that if the market pumps, I don't have to look back on what I'm holding and be angry and annoyed that I didn't put enough in and I didn't make any money because I will make a significant amount of money if we pump from here. But also I will only lose what I'm completely okay with losing if it happens and the market goes down. It will only be money that I am okay with going down. And because I'm only investing in things that I genuinely believe will make it into the next bull run, it doesn't really matter because I can just simply buy more. So that's how I'm preparing for this. And yeah, guys, that was my thoughts on what is happening in this market. I wanted to give you a little bit of a video while I was walking. It's been a while since I've done one of these. And yeah, let me know your thoughts on this down there in the comment section. As always, I don't know what is going to happen next. I don't know if the market will dump from here. I don't know if it will pump from here. We just need to position ourselves for both of those situations that fit our specific financial needs. And uh, yeah, I don't want to be a guy who comes here and pretends that he knows what's going to happen because I don't. But hopefully you guys appreciate that from my videos. And if you do, I would appreciate if you smashed up that subscribe button. And I will, of course, see you guys in the next one. Peace.